How are you doing? It's Robert from Permaboss. Today I'm going to do a little bit of improv lasering, I guess. What I want to do, it's one of the hottest days of the year, so I want to etch a toboggan, a shovel. I want to go from stainless steel to a wood chair to leather glove to tools, cork, leather, etc. And then I'll also do some garments quickly. I'm going to make it as short as I can. The purpose of the video is to give you an overall view of all the things you can do without having to watch a whole series of videos and I'll show you the versatility. The laser behind me is the NGL, Next Generation Laser. Uh, some people have been asking, you know, do I need the 50 watt, whatever. We generally sell it in 40, 60, 80 and 100 watts. The most common being the 60 watt in the last six months to a year or so and the 40 watt being the next most common and maybe I don't know, 10% of the 100 watt for the people who want to do everything and do it the fastest way possible. This is the laser we take to the show. On purpose, we don't show you the details of the touch screen because we work very hard at making and keeping the technology here in North America, Canadian or US, and we really don't want to send it over to the other part of the world and have the um, everything knocked off really easily. So we're doing everything touch screen, so you'll see my hand move, but it won't be focused on, but that's just for competitive reasons. You'll have full access to that later on, okay? And I'll just play it by ear. And like I said, it's really hot today. It was one of the hottest days yesterday of the year, so there's a couple fans running a bit louder in the ambient temperature to keep the laser cool, so I'll try and speak above it. But the first thing I have to do when I do anything that's stainless steel that isn't coated is to grab a spray. And that spray is a special laser coating spray. And what I'll do is I'll do that right now over here. I'll coat it on as evenly as possible and then I'll let that dry. And I'll do a second one right over here. I'll do it at the back. I'll do it at the front here. I'll turn upside down and clean out the nozzle. So I'll let that sit and I'll let that dry. Uh, a piece of marble now and what I'll do is uh, work through and do different changes of settings and heights etc. But here we go. So I got the marble. I'll put in a setting that's a uh, very high power. Uh, maximum speed is 99% of the 50 watt. And then I'll put in uh, power, sorry. Then I'll put in a speed of millimeters per second or inches per minute but we'd like to work with millimeters and the number of passes. Put that at the focal range. And you don't have to be super exact, super precise with regards to the focus because we've got a large focus area. So that's done one time. And what I'm going to do is uh, slow it down to half the speed to get a deeper effect in there. And now you see that as a, with the camera, it's a much brighter, whiter light and I just changed what I did to get a different result. So when you're trying something out with the laser, especially this one, you have the flexibility, don't move the object, just do it once, do it in the safe zone with our recipe and if you don't like the result, you can make a tweak or a change. So just hold that here. So the next thing I want to do are a couple objects that you never thought of doing. I bought some paintbrushes and a hammer. I'll go change the artwork. And again, how easy is it to register it? I'll just set it up just like that. I'm in that focal zone again. And I'll switch. And I've just got that done. So I can feel that. I don't destroy anything. I just take off the surface. And if I make some changes, I can get a different result. So if I go here, slow it down. Do the other side. And what I did now was I changed the power setting and I slow down the laser and I'm going to go over it twice if you're focused on that. So I've got the doors open and a fan blowing to keep the room cool so some of the smoke went out and I've got the hood set high so that you can see underneath otherwise that smoke would be captured. And now I've got something that actually is quite a bit deeper and you can feel the impression with your fingernail. So 
So that should be the name of the video, you know, get hammered. So I'll zoom, I'll take out of here, put it one pass. This is a different type of wood, it might react a bit different, but I can pretty much leave the same setting. Ready, set, go. And that's got like a lacquer or enameled finish on it. So I've got a, a border around there, but I could change settings again to do whatever I like. So what I'll do for the next one is I'll speed it up. And because I've always got a box to aim, I can always register stuff freehand and be on my way and get it done and get turnover and get turnover. I don't have complicated setups like with embroidery. I don't need people highly specialized. You get people who care about what they do and they'll do a good job. And you got to talk really fast because you run out of time because everything is so darn fast. Now we're going to do something with uh, a coating on it. And look at that result, that's completely different than the other one because I'm going through that coating or whatever the material is. So I got an iPad cover for my wife because you know I don't want to have a red one. It's almost harder to get out of the package. So I'm going to reduce the power to around 50%. I'm going to do it at a high speed just so I can see the result. And now I've got to find the location, but how do you register something perfect? You always use this bar here, and that makes life easy and simple. So I've got it spaced evenly, and I can fire away. So that's like a, a leather at suede product that we have there. And this is a very difficult design because it's a rhinestone logo um, that's the word and rhinestones are obviously dots and what we've done here is we've got tens of thousands of dots so if you had to do that in stitches that would be start stop cut start stop cut that would be insane to do and then you couldn't do something like this because you need to get to the back of it and it would be hard to register this in a tabletop laser because you've got no system to visually place it and go and if you have to have turnover you want to knock it out knock it out knock it out So I like the depth of that, I'll leave it and I'm done. So there, in a few seconds of my talking, you've got a very cool logo. Now, do something a bit cool for a change. Let's get these things out of the way so I can keep production going here is I've got the front of a birdhouse for my daughter because I want to do a, a father-daughter type of uh, project and I'm going to do something very cool by putting an image on here with her name. I'm going to do it in wood so I can leave this setting that I basically have here. So now I've got that set up, registered. And you notice that I've got like a pole in there. I've got something sticking up for the bird to rest on, but I completely don't have to worry about that because if I had a plotter laser, I'd run into the roof, I'd hit that. I couldn't get as close as I need to, but because I'm shooting from the distance, I've got a great solution to avoid any of those issues. So now I've got birdhouse for my daughter and then I'll put the build the box around it and she'll have a nice little project and then she can paint the bird and do whatever. The point is the versatility of what we're doing. Now I did the family crest, my own family crest, I just made it up. And this is a cork just for pots and stuff like that. I haven't done cork before so what I'm going to do is just pick a low setting. I personally literally haven't done it. I'll pick a logo here. Uh, I just got to find it, H, 
21 inch wings. So I'm going to go to a lower percentage and a high speed. Center the cork on here. So I basically always have that special image with a center point with our laser. Our software does that and then you can see exactly how to register it, how to line it up. And that's actually perfect. So I, in this case I went down to 30%. If I was totally unsure and had no confidence, I would start at 15%, look at it, don't move it, and then yank it up to the higher setting here. I cut it in less than wood, assuming it's going to behave similar to the wood. And uh, I hit right on the spot, no problem. So this is good when you're doing marketing for your clients. We basically show you the tools on how to market and get the machine profitable versus I think most people just sell your machine and say good luck, figure it out yourself. We'll give you many different tools and ideas on how to stay in touch with your best customers. So you could do a drink coaster and let all your clients know that you've got something new. Now we're going to be doing a mailing. You might be one of the people who receive it and I just took a leather chamois we had a client who, when they first got the laser, got an order for 2,900 of these leather chamois. And I just want to create something where I can do a mailing. So we're going to end up marking this with our logo and something that we can cut out. First thing I'm going to do is just take one logo and try and find the setting. just see how it behaves. Get this table to the focal height. You know some of our competitors have criticized the music stand and that's what we take to the trade show. We don't take a much more simple unique system to the trade show and let everybody know but you know, if it's not broken and it works, why knock it? And if it gets too elaborate, it gets something that can be broken or something that takes too long to set up. So we've got a similar technique, just a little bit more robust and a little bit sexier looking than the music stand for the demo. But also for the demo, I switch and switch and switch and switch. What else is easier than that? So I'm going to do one little logo first. And I'm going to see that it's a bit too light. So what I'm going to do is change the setting a little bit here. Wait till the laser finishes. Good, so now I've got this logo inside of here. And that'll be a unique, quick way to create something for an automobile insurance company or any business that has to do anything with cars and car dealerships. And you drive by these businesses all the time, but you need to help. A car dealership, for example, spends up to $600 to get one person in sometimes into the dealership. So you need to give your customers ideas. The people that sell for you need to give them ideas. And one way is to go buy a, a chamois. I think I bought these at Costco for a three pack and I'll get hundreds of logos out of this to send to my clients as an idea and then they would do the same thing to theirs. So that's how that works. So now I'm going to pick a larger design. This is really big. It's going to take a lot longer. Put a bit of weight down here. And that's it. So now I'm going to do something that's 12 by 12 with that same setting. So I'm going to make a dozen of these, or uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so I'm going to do a dozen at a time on a square foot. And because I'm going to make a dozen at once, I got to come up with new things to say. So I'll figure something out. So now these have uh, dried up. 
These are the stainless steel bottles. And I'm gonna pick a few logos. These are just thermoses, uh, drink bottles. And I'm gonna put my daughter's name on for camp and she's a horse fanatic and takes riding lessons. So I'm gonna put a little horse on it. She'll probably remember that more than her name. The coating is there because it basically, um, it's like a ceramic or a porcelainizing effect on the metal and it leaves it black afterwards. So anything that has no coating becomes a dark color and you have to get the, the line settings correct because you're talking about the spacing in between the vectors. So if they're spaced apart, the laser has an effect on uh, a synthetic product like a polar fleece, micro fleece, a polyester, the heat wave radiates wider so the lines are further apart. But on steel, I've got to put the lines much closer together to have the same effect. And I've got three more to go here. I won't do the whole chamois for the mailing. I'll get somebody else to do that. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what can be done marketing wise. So when you have a slow time with a laser, you've got to pick the permaboss marketing materials and then use that to stimulate business. Most I would say, I want to say it right without offending people, but after you know more than 4,000 visits and clients over the years, the chronic problem is you guys don't do enough marketing. You're reactive to the things that are happening and not proactive creating business. So that's one thing that I want to help you create with our team here at the company. So that's done. And now I'll finish up the whole chamois, but I've got a whole chamois to cut out and I've got uh, three of them to do. So I'll have, you know, 50, 60 pieces per chamois to send out. So what I'll do is I'll set up the bottle and a quick little trick is plasticine just to hold the bottle into position. I'll change the logo. Uh, do you remember what the settings were? Full power. And the speed was 100? Okay. No pressure to you in the audience. I wasn't asking you, I was asking the cameraman, okay? So on the back side of the bottle, I'm going to put it sideways. I'll put a bit of plasticine down here so it can hold the bottle into position. I'll move the center of the bottle here and now I'll lower it so that it's within the focal range. And I know some people who know laser are losing their mind because the sales reps will tell you how accurate you have to be all the time and how it has to be so perfect and special. But when you make a laser to have the, the beam come together and then for a long time it's one beam and it starts to expand. Then I can put my product within that band or that range. I don't have to be so precise. We're not making parts to go to the moon. We're decorating clothing and products and we can be really precise and really quick. So you got the camera focused on there? Can I have a wet cloth? So I've got a wet cloth and the purpose of the wet cloth is to wipe off the product afterwards. That's how simple it is. I could take it to the sink and uh, do it underneath the sink for you as well. So it takes a little bit longer because I'm going at pretty much 10% of the speed that I would run at with a textile because I'm doing it in steel and I want to get the heat into the product to personalize the steel that's on there. And I'm done. So it's still steaming hot. And when I look at this, in this particular case, I could slow this down or I could have let it cool and I wouldn't have the dramatic effect from the stainless steel. Now I'll put the horse at the back. It's a much smaller image, much quicker. So 
So let that cool off a bit. And I can wipe it off. If I take that to the sink, do you have another paper towel for me? better do it the sink than with a paper towel. So here I've just got a very fine trace of the outline of the horse because that's what I wanted to do with just something that has a bit of a horse effect on it. Now, this is uh, the famous SIG bottle and what we did here was we took off the surface completely. Now I didn't do this before so I had to do some tests and some settings. Can you focus in on here? So I tested on a logo I had what the width of the spacing was between the lines and I had too much energy, too dark. And then I did another test and then I did a test with the horse and so I got this effect. So when you have a brand new product for a customer, what you're going to do is ask for one extra. There's a lot of surface area. This is just a used one to get an idea, document it because we don't have a list of everything you can't do. We haven't figured that all out yet because there's so much that you can do. So I've got a few more items here. This one is pretty common and it's in a lot of the videos, but I said I wanted to do a summary of everything. So I've got a uh, champion garment, it's polyester, and I'm going to put uh, a logo over the zipper and over the front. So I've got the logo right here. Does that look solid there? That's okay, that one? put in my settings swipe this all up raise it up to the zone get my garment, register it I'm going to use, because I'm trying to do things quick and have a lot of flexibility, I don't want the garment to move. I'm going to put some weight on it just for now. And I want to remind you that when you go in production, you have a different system than it's here, so the product isn't moving. But I've just picked the most flexible way of doing the most things in the shortest period of time, so it's a bit of a cheat. So I'm not sure if you can zoom in there for me. And I've got it positioned, spaced over the laser. I'm picking a low power and a high speed. I'm doing one pass. And I'm gonna fire it right now. So again, right over the zipper without any issue at all. So how the heck would you ever do something like that on embroidery? No effect on the zipper whatsoever. But now I want to put a logo underneath that as well. But again, I'm not going to hoop anything. I'm just going to change my design. Check the spacing between left and right, and that's it. That's my registration.
I still get a kick out of watching it because other than the fan running, that's the quietest way ever to make money. And I'm doing a full front decoration and I'm still doing both parts. I could have done that logo actually probably on the typical laser that my clients buy in one hit. I just have a demo laser with a 300 by 300 millimeter field, but typically people are buying it at 14 inches by 14 inches, which is around 360 by 360 millimeters. So this is one of our Permaboss's clients. Now I'll switch to do some other cool things. And what I want to do is uh, the back. I have to block, I have to look at, just look for one sec, go down here. I've got 90% of the garment, can you move the camera to get this here? 90% of the garment's hanging below. But I just used something heavy, which is that uh, custom etched granite to hold it. Both sides of the uh, collar are curved, just the middle's down. And now I've got the logo in here. Done. I'm looking for a word. Uh, apparel. Outline fill. Revive your logo, there it is. So now I want to do something right along the sleeve, so I'll fold the garment over. You're going to love this because nobody can do this. So check this out. What I did was I put the sleeve on top of the garment and I registered it this way. I'm just going to write some words there put their slogan on. What was the logo we had for the bags? Okay. So here's a gift bag. Got that? I'm rushing because I got to take some of the airport. And then I got to get a tooth pulled to get my Invisalign. So all the videos after this are going to have me with that uh, mouthpiece in for a whole year. And then we'll do a close-up of my teeth next year this time. Fair enough. So hold on one more second and then I'll run to the, uh, take one of our guys to the airport. RSL. Uh, 5,500. So I'm going to put it at 50%. I'm going to put in 500. Notice I'm the owner of the company because I don't remember all the settings that all the guys do here. So I've got this paper bag. Place it right in here. Get it dead center and square. Ready to go? So what a cool way to do something for your client. Make the gift bag. Make it eco-friendly. Get it in a wooden box. Do things that are unique, innovative, and creative. But you can't do all these different unique things if you don't have the right tools. I'm going to run out of time right now, but I'll do it in another video where I've got uh, a beanbag game for my daughter. I want a logo. I've got a stool for the trade show and I've got a baseball glove. Done. So I'll take a break for a sec and if not, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.